Today we're going to talk about the, the art of staying mysterious and having more of an air of mystery around you. The principles outlined in this video are from own experience and from the book Power from Robert Greene. The thing I need you to learn is to conceal your intentions. How do you do this? You basically never reveal why you are doing something. If you're ignoring a girl, she will feel ignored and she will maybe think that you lost interest in her. But if you later reveal that you only did that because you wanted more attention from her, it will seem very needy and very ugly, right? And she won't be able to like fully trust you because she will know that you did something very ugly in order to get her, right? So don't like tell people why you did something or indirectly tell it to them. If you ignore a girl, don't say, oh yeah, I, I wanted to see if you reply back or if you text me first or if you have any interest in me. Don't say that because that will then reveal your intention to get attention and the intention to get attention is always seen as needy. Even though everybody has it, it is seen as needy. Of course, this is stupid, but it's just the way it is. And it's just the way the world works. So you need to adapt to this. Never come across as if you needed attention, but always strive for it because attention means power. Next principle is always say less than necessary. This is a very difficult thing to actually execute because very few people actually know the implementation for this. If I told you, always say less than necessary, then you knew, oh, okay, I'm just going to say less. But that's not the real purpose of this. The real purpose of always saying less than necessary is first of all, being more mysterious because you say less. And second of all, being less in the risk of saying dumb shit, right? If every 100th word that you said was stupid, if you just said half the words that you would regularly say, then the sort of percentage at, bit, at which you would say dumb shit would be way smaller, right? So always use this mindset and I'm, that I'm about to teach to you to do this. And the mindset of which how you do this is you always try to make everything you say a title. How do I mean this? How is a YouTube title written? Is a YouTube title written? I'm going to go to the beach and I'm going to take a bunch of friends with me and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to play ball and I'm going to swim. Or is it just written a day at the beach? What does a YouTuber want when he writes a title? He wants attention and he wants a kind of mystery around the video so you don't know what exactly is happening and you want to know what the fuck a day at the beach means for this guy. This is used in many, many videos, right? They say something in the title and then they make it even more appealing with their thumbnail and then you click on it because it had so much of your attention that you practically had to click on it. Make your words exactly like this. Think of what you want to say and then say it in a title form. If someone asks you what to do or what you do that day, you don't say, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to train chest and then I'm going to do this exercise and da 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 You simply say, a day at the gym. A day at the gym. Five words. And they will attract more attention to you than those millions of words and phrases that you would use to describe your days. Just say a day at the gym. And then this person will think, what, what, what will they do in the gym? And then, he has, and then he gives more attention to you because then he asks you, oh, what are you going to do at the gym? Oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train chest. Oh, what are you going to do? I don't know. I shall see. I shall see is a very powerful phrase used by King Louis from France. In the Renaissance, he used to always say this sort of, I shall see. There were always ministers coming to him, asking him to, to build this thing, to build this house. And then he simply said, I shall see. And just acted on whatever he thought was good. Do this and you will appear more mysterious and more powerful altogether. Make people come to you 
instead of coming to people. Because what you will do by making people come to you, well, first of all, like you will, you will make their their energy be less because they had to stand up, they had to walk over to you, they had to get the thing, and then they had to then they have to go back. If you make them come to you, you always lower their energy, which will lower their defense, and you can manipulate them easier to think that you are mysterious. If someone asks you to give you this thing. In football, we often have this like before the game starts. We have this like this tape for our for our bodies, right? When when your shoulder is broken, you tape up your shoulder, and then it's better during the game, right? And people always ask like other people, "Do you have tape to tape my shoulder or my ankle?" And then these people don't say, "Yeah, here, here, I, I'll give it to you." They say, "Come to me, I'll give it to you," or "Come get it." Use this tactic to make them act on your behalf because they come to you. This is the first thing. Get them to say yes, yes, yes. This is a tactic from another book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And influence people I'm sorry. That you need to get them to say yes, yes, yes. And the first yes in this sort of, sort of equation is saying yes to coming to you. Yes, I will come to you. Oh, you want me to... To, to get it from the floor, yes, I'll get it from the floor. Or you want me to, to be dominated by you? Yes, I'll do it. Yes, yes, yes. It's always easier to stay in a pattern than to break out of the pattern. You will know this with diets and everything. So keep people in the pattern of saying yes to you by doing this. Through actions, not through words. This is the, this is the third principle that I want you to implement. And... Winning through actions will make your enemies not not negotiable, right? You cannot negotiate with your enemy when you're just when you've already acted. So don't don't talk to an enemy and don't make it clear to them with your words, but make it an undeniable truth. Prove it by action and not with words. If I if I was to told you, if I was to tell you self-improvement is unhealthy. You wouldn't believe me because every man thinks that he is right. Every man thinks that he is right in the way he does things. Every man. The stupid ones, the smart ones, the exceptional ones, the entrepreneurs, everybody thinks that he is right in what he's doing. And everybody thinks that everybody else is wrong. Everybody does this. I, you, Hamza, everybody. What you need to do is you need to know this and you need to prove it to them. Again, the bad self-improvement advice from like a minute ago. If I just told you self-improvement is bad for you because of this, 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 this. Meditation ruins your brain. And I told you it and, and I sh would show you studies and everything. You wouldn't believe me. But if I then... Showed you, showed you that, oh shit, your brain is broken. Look at this scan of your brain. Your brain is broken because of meditation, some shit. And you would, and the percentage of the, of the sort of belief that has changed through my proving this will be higher. Because you see, okay, this is really right. Because it's been proven to you by me with action and not with words. Never try to convince an enemy as a convinced enemy is often more of an enemy because he will resent you. If you disprove the fact that he is right with your words, only with your words, especially in front of people, he, res he will resent you even more. And this is why you need to make it clear to him that what he is doing wrong is actually wrong by action and not with words. Because then he will say, oh, he, that, that guy is stupid. That guy is stupid. And he will tell everybody, oh, he's so stupid, da, 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 this, this and that. If I told you self-improvement is bad, you would go out to all of your friends and say, oh, that guy is stupid. Caveman is wrong. But if I showed you your brain scan, which is actually like maybe damaged, and, and I could tell you this is because of self-improvement, you will believe it more and you will say, maybe he's not full of shit. So always prove your that, that what you say, if you even need to say it, by action and not through talking. You don't even need to say anything to claim anything. You can just, 
You can just show a picture and it will automatically make people assume something. Always act and don't talk if you try to like get people to do something. Learn to keep them dependent on you. This is a very important thing that you need to implement because keeping people dependent on you will, will make them more drawn to you and which will give you more attention. And you always want attention because you want power. Why do you want to be mysterious? You want to be powerful. You don't want to be mysterious. You want to be powerful and you want to be special. And you only become those two things if you keep people dependent on you. The first thing you need to do is become better than anyone that they can really realistically have. With girls, this is like a very big thing. Because if you're the best decision she can make out of logic, then she will make that decision for you. She will decide for you if you're the best decision that you can take. The problem that we see in the modern age is that there's Instagram. Instagram playboys. Everything. Of course he is a better choice than you. If he always appears perfect because he obviously only takes pictures when he's perfect. And you're seen in bad moments, in moments of down. Because she's always living with you. This is why no girlfriend of me will have like a big social media presence ever. Ever. Because she will then see this guy who's probably worse than me in everything. But he only shows himself in the 5% of cases in which he is better than me. And then she will compare the worst image of me that she, that she has. Because that will stick in her mind more than the best cases. With the best cases of this guy. And this is just unfair. Having a moment of down is normal. But comparing your moment of down to the moment of up from somebody else is just the worst thing that can happen to you. So become better than anyone that you, that you can really have and get all the people that you want to respect you into the real world. And if you're in some job, of course they could hire somebody better. But somebody better should be in a different country or in a different endeavor than you. Be the best at the thing that you do that people can realistically have. Of course you could buy a fucking 8 million dollar coaching course by somebody else but that's not realistic the more realistic approach would be to buy the 200 dollar coach because he the he, because he's the best that you can realistically get even though the other guy is better you cannot realistically get him and therefore you decide for the people that you could really get so be the best one that the people around you could realistically get get other get Get over their edge of comfort. It should be more comfortable to keep you than to give you up. A very famous, a very famous guy named Bismarck was in very many political structures in Germany. Right during the during the Prussian rulings. And because he was in so many political endeavors, because he was literally in every structure, somewhere integrated in some little thing, if you took him out, not, if, not because he was better, but because he was involved in so many things, he was irreplaceable. And you want to become irreplaceable to keep other people dependent on you. You can become irreplaceable by being the best or by being the most. And being the most is certainly the easier thing, so pick this. Be involved in so many things that taking you out would collapse the whole thing. Don't be free. Don't be free. How does a free man look? A free man lives in a cabin in the woods. A quote from the book Power, which I think is absolutely perfect because a free man has no power. Because power is always a relation between two people. If I am more powerful than you, then I have a relationship of power between you and me. And because I have more power, I succeed in this relationship. And if you want to be totally free, you cannot have a relationship to any human being or to anything. Then you need to be dead. If you want to be free, you want to be dead. Because having a relationship to anything is necessary. 
You need to have a relationship to food. You need to eat. You need to drink. You need to go to the toilet. You need to have human endeavors. You need to be with other humans. So don't try to be free. Don't waste your energy. Get the appearance of a very specialized knowledge. You don't need to be especially good in something. You just need to appear like one. Use more sort of dramatic phrases. Like Andrew Tate does this perfectly. In his quote, an unmatched perspicacity coupled with sheer indefatigability makes me a free opponent in any realm of human endeavor. He made a sentence that was so easy, very complicated, and therefore he seemed very qualified to say this sentence. Make your sentences as abstract as, as, as possible if you want to make somebody interested in something you say. If you want to explain something to somebody you like or to somebody that you just want to teach to, you say it as simple as possible. In my videos, it's always explained you do this and that, da 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 da, da actionable steps. Explain for three-year-olds, okay? So what you do to keep them dependent on you, you become special by using special phrases that they don't know, that they have to ask for you to explain them. If I told this Andrew Tate quote to anybody, they would say, what the fuck did you just say? Can you please repeat that in, a, in normal English? And they would become more interested and I would have more power because I have more attention than them for myself because they gave me attention, right? And of course, be involved in everything. These are the actionable steps. Involve yourself in as much as possible with like actually contributing as less time as you can possibly do. Right? You can actually contribute as much time. And the more time you contribute to those many things, the more important you will get in them and the more drastically uncomfortable it would be to take you out. But you don't need to invest a lot in everything. You can just be part of something and every now and then throw them a little bit of effort a little worksheet or something and then you're painful to take out because you're part of it right the next thing be be gone for every now and then be gone for every now and then why because if you're gone for every now and then you're not predictable if you're always there you are predictable we'll talk about predictability in like in in five to ten minutes of this video and always be unpredictable be gone for every now and then. This is the actionable step. And I don't need to explain it. Commit. Always make them insecure. If I talk to somebody or I text with some girl, I always have this thought in my brain, make her insecure. Because insecurity will always drive you to do something. If you're insecure about your, your physical look, like body dysmorphia, then you will go to the gym more. If you're insecure about the love of somebody you like, then you would give him more love in hopes of getting more love. So I always use this. I always make people insecure. I don't commit to people. I don't say, oh, I'm your friend. I'm this, I'm that. If people, in fact, if people say, oh, we're friends, right? I say, no, the fuck? I only know you. I barely know you. Who, who the fuck are you? I make them insecure and this will give me more secrets about them because they say, because they will say, oh, I'm this, I'm that, da, 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 we have so much in common. Da, da, da. And I will say, no, we don't have anything in common. I'm not like that. And I will make them furthermore insecure to always re reveal more secrets from them because if they give me all their secrets, then they depend on me. They are dependent on me. I am their master now because I have all their secrets. Because they gave them to me because I made them feel insecure. So make people insecure by being gone for every now and then, by talking less, and by basically using all the sort of principles outlined in this video. This video is basically a, a guide on how to make other people feel insecure about themselves or about the relationship between you, both of you. So don't commit. Always make people feel insecure formless every attack that is launched onto you should seem like stabbing water what happens if you stab water nothing get a blade get a knife or something fill up your your bathtub 
and try to kill the water with your, with your knife. Can you kill the water? No, you can't. Why? Because water is formless. If you put water in a cup, it becomes the cup. If you put water in, in, a, in, a, in a tube, then it becomes the tube. Always try to be formless. Because if you're formless, if people can't predict you, they can't make out your weaknesses and your strength, and therefore they can't attack you. What happened to Andrew Tate? He became too predictable. He became too the alpha male leader who has confidence in everything. And what got attacked? His stability, what he was known for. He was always known for being stable. And what was attacked? His stability was attacked. You always become attacked for the things people know for you. If you are known as a, diff, as a very disciplined person, then you will be attacked as such. Do you understand this? This is not to say that you shouldn't be disciplined or that you shouldn't or that you shouldn't have a have have like a, a sort of an a line in your acts right you should always act in a way that brings you the most growth right but you should never and really never become a form become your reputation become something that people know because if you become something that people know they will know you and then they, and then they will attack you for that the thing they know of you, they will attack. They will attack because they always want to. They always want you to prove something. They always want you to prove what you are good at because people want to see the thing that they see as reality. People want the thing that they see to be real. If I see this this fucking tree right there, I want it to be a tree. I don't want it to be a river. So I test it on being a tree by looking at it further. If I see you as disciplined, I want to see you as disciplined. If I think that you're disciplined, I want to see you as disciplined. And therefore, I will test you on your discipline. Well, how do I do this? I make your life more difficult. How do I do this? I attack you. Never become formful. Never be something. Never, never have a reputation to do something. Because then the people will be able to predict you. If there's a cake in front of you and you're a very, very disciplined person like I am, people will predict, oh, you won't eat it. And I'm not telling you to eat it, I just tell you to act different than what people know from you. If you do this, then you become, become formless and people won't attack a formless thing. People won't attack water or fucking jelly. They won't attack water or jelly, right? Because they know that their attacks would be worthless and they can't even aim their attack. At what would you aim if you were to shoot the water with a gun? At what would you aim? Seriously, at what, at what would you aim? Nothing. There's nothing to aim for. Because water doesn't have a strength or weakness. It's just water. Never have a reputation for what you will do next. Guys, this was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned on like how to be more mysterious and how to gain more power. I will certainly review more of the book um, when I'm like further on, on really understanding how it works and having it implemented more into my life. But these are the, but these are the points that I understood perfectly and that I am, felt comfortable teaching to you. If you liked the video, please share a comment. It takes you five seconds and a couple thumb things to tell me what you liked and what you didn't like. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Be mindful.